Hello, Yate, JR, Richard the Crane in chat, um, Ketlachini, Bashachin, Kagi de Nanchle, um, Ashin, the Shate, Kagi net, the Nan, the Shinella, Kutea, the Nanchle, I don't yet, um, yeah, Tayara, I used to Nasha, um, I don't Kutea, Kutea, the Nanchle, um, hello everybody, um, uh, my name is Richard the Crane, I'm here again, live on Facebook, I'm here to share, um, if you saw from the thumbnail, you know, we're talking about powwow and, you know, how, how it's, um, culture is prevention, you know, native culture is prevention, you know, whatever, um, um, part of culture it is, you know, it, it really is prevention, it, you know, it gives, you know, good things for our youth and good things for elders and, and adults. Um, also, I think today we're going to be talking about, uh, a little more about powwow protocol and, you know, positions, um, of the powwow. And uh, when I talk about powwow, I'm talking about, you know, the Plains Indians version of the dancing and, and celebration with the big drum. And our veterans come in, in and um, powwow dancers. Um, so we're going to touch on that today. Uh, I think last week, just talking about last week, um, what we kind of talked about. Um, real quick recap. Look at my notes here. Uh, I know we had quite a few people share, you know, a few powwow memories and some input that they, um, like I was saying before, you know, this is more of a discussion um, than me just talking to you. Um, I'd like to be more of a, of a discussion and, you know, some input from other people because I know a lot of people, there's other, like I said before, there's other knowledge keepers um, of some of our traditional ways of our doings. Um, and so, you know, if you have that knowledge, you know, please share it uh, with me. You know, I'm going to be going through some stuff um, kind of a history of powwows, you know, kind of a starting from kind of the origins where, where I know it came from because I know a lot of different places uh, this powwow has, you know, come into different people's lives in different areas. Like I said before, um, powwow itself, you know, from my point of view, came from its origin story is a little different than most people. Um, I think a lot of people first, um, the first, um, I guess the um, time they went to a powwow was, you know, going to either a contest powwow or a locally traditional kind of one in contemporary times, you know. A lot of people don't know that the traditional, um, the origin story of where, of where it came from. Um, a lot of people don't know, you know, how powwows were started, you know, the, the complexity. It's kind of what I want to touch on today um, in organizing, just like organizing a powwow. There's, there's a whole lot of uh, things that have to be done, you know, um, and things that have to be, you know, in place, um, like I was talking about rights and, and responsibilities and, you know, and what's the protocol, you know, protocol for day, today's, uh, modern powwow is a little different than what it used to be back, you know, back in the day, um, when they first, you know, first began and powwows have been around long before, long before me, long before, you know, um, Columbus was here, you know, 500 plus years, um, um, our, our native gatherings have been going on here on this continent, you know, and then just thinking about how long had it, it has been going on, you know, there's things that were developed, there's systems that were developed, there was, you know, um, like I said, rights and responsibilities that were developed, with, that came along with this, um, um, this powwow. Uh, for me, like I, was, I, I said before, you know, the powwow for the Crow people, you know, for the Navajo side of my, my, wow. Um, um, now said, I mean, we didn't have uh, powwow or powwow dancing as, I, as we know it as Plains, Plains Indians dancing um, or, you know, the dog eating ceremony, um, if you talk to the Lakota. Um, but the Crow side, you know, I, I think I touched on it last time of the origin story where we got it, you know, where we um, originally got it from, you know, it was our warriors, you know, our warriors captured the, the Lakota warriors and the Lakota um, elders um, end up giving us the rights and responsibilities to have this uh, that ceremony of the dog eating ceremony or, you know, the, the celebration of veterans, that's, you know, what it turned into f to for us as, as, uh, as, as Crow people or Absalga people, you know, was the celebration of, of the, the warriors that, you know, would come home and, you know, they would tell their story through song and dance and there would be a great a celebration that was put together. Um, and, and, you know, and it was, uh, it's both social and, you know, both, um, uh, storytelling and performance 
Um, so there was a lot of things that were involved, and there's a lot of people, and a lot of the people that organized these um, events were the people that were at that at the village or at the the home um, home place, wherever you call that. Um, they would organize that, and it was uh, certain families that took responsibility. For us, you know, in the Crow modern um, times, we have a, something called a big Crow Fair, and that's a huge event. I know, and every year, you know, there's an election process that happens, and people that want to run that big cultural event, you know, uh, have to um, basically uh, just like you know, trying to become president of the United States, you know, you have to you know put out flyers and say tell everybody you're running, and you know, you kind of petition for it basically, and then you get voted in. And that year, you know, there's the different positions um, that handle different areas, and you know, different families. It's basically families change. It changes hands every year um, for us, and that's the way the Crow people kind of did it. And we we didn't, um, like I said, we got our information from um, the Lakota people, and from you know, f as we as we went on, you know, we didn't um, partake or 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 we didn't do some of that ceremony, like the dog eating ceremony. That's part if you go to some of the um, some of the Lakota gatherings. You know, they have, they still have that ceremony, but you know, as uh, Crow people, we didn't really do that. <laughs> Um, we kind of left that part out, um, but uh, we still, you know, find our dogs very sacred. Our dogs are very important to us. And um, but anyway, that's the part I know that we kind of left out. But we still do the the celebration of the veterans and and and, and celebrating times. And so you know, thinking of modern times, coming forward, I don't want to. I just want to kind of give it like an origin story. Like for us as Crow people, we also you know. Um, it was only the beginning, you know, when we got the rights and responsibilities when we returned that war the warriors, you know, that, that dense bustle and that um, the that, that um the bundles um sacred ties returned to, to the Lakota people and they gave us that. And so, you know, we it it, it was it became more advanced, you know. And I think uh, I kinda touched on the the times when that's kinda when this kinda happened was long, long, long ago before I think even um, you know, Columbus was even here. Um and I think as uh, as uh, colonization and you know, as Europeans came, you know, things happened and, and and our history, you know, changed a little bit. And there's so much. Um, it's grown since then. You know, I think uh, I, when I when I go back, I always hear stories of how you know how the film of the first Powell was. You know, only the there was only. Um, hold on, let me close this window. Kids are out. <laughs> Or you get too serious, you know. Oh, I forgot the show. Look at what a Thomas made for me. Ooh, Thomas D. Crane made this. He beat it. Get close. It's a little Yoda. He beat it. At, and he beat it this um, lanyard, too. So my son, Thomas, uh, who's the mediator, thank you very much. You know, I just wanted to wear that today. Um, and show it off. Um, really, you know, I was really happy he made it. Beat it for my birthday, got it done. Um, but I haven't been able to show it off and showcase. But anyway... Um, getting back to our story, trying to, you know, I'm trying to, uh, uh, I was thinking about, you know, well, I can't, I don't know why I keep saying, you know, you know, you know, um, sometimes you don't know, but sometimes you know, um, so I apologize for saying, you know, <laughs> um, I think when I get nervous, I start saying that, um, but thinking about, um, kind of the origin Origins of how it began for us, you know, as crow people, you know, um, we didn't put on our first, you know, it's over the crow fair itself is over 102 years old, and there's quite a few years we never counted. We that's only when when we started started to take count. So it's over 102 years. If you haven't been there, I know a few people got to have got to experience the the crow fair itself. But you know, um, like I said, you know, if in back in the day long 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 ago um we were still uh the power was still being developed it was still you know being um formed and um put into place and i think um what i've heard you know from a lot of elders you know, traveling to different powwows um up in you know, montana and in that area and also from my relatives you know that some of the first powwows were um and only men were dancers, you know, only the men were, were allowed to dance, only the, actually only the warriors, you know, uh, like I said, warriors uh, is a mistranslation, um, it's not just men, um, it was the people that went out and, and, and 
and, and you know were gone for long periods of time and came back and and they were celebrated and um, so warriors you know they're they're female warriors they're men warriors um, there's two spirit warriors you know they're not just um, we don't thinking out of gender you know I don't, I don't know a lot of people think that way you know Western way of, of being taught and, and learned but in, in native way of thinking you know we were, were you could say non-binary our way of thinking was never really binary until you know recently um, but anyway thinking about that you know at the beginning you know, only those warriors were allowed to dance and you know you had and, and some of it you know a lot of time was the the men but also you know the women or other folks like kids um, young kids and older people and and even women you would see them uh, around the outside of the arena they would they would still be you know dancing and participating a little bit but in, in the in, in on the inside of the the dance circle would be um, the men you know dancing I know I know I've seen stories and I've seen a few pictures I think uh, uh, I saw one picture a while back I think uh, Jim Red Eagle um, had shared a picture of, of a gentleman that you know stop dancing because you know they let women start dancing but anyway um, like I said you know our way of thinking has kind of changed and how we used to think and I'm more trying to get back to that way of uh, non-binary thinking as Indian people you know some of us are, are, are a few steps farther and some of us are are still a few steps back uh, but anyway um, just thinking about that you know so the men of the warriors were the only ones that were dancing in that arena so the beginnings so no, there was no kids. There was no, um, there was no um, like kind of monetary money kind of contests yet. Uh, I think it kind of evolved into that. I think uh, between the warriors, you know, there was a little bit of competition when they danced and, and shared stories, you know, and, and you know, I think um, later on, I know other stories of how um, money came involved. Um, I think the first um, contest money with monetary money was that. Um, I tell my uncle always tells me about it the Fort Kip powwow where they had oil money and so you know that was one of the first um, contest money with monetary money uh, money involved and there was always all always contests you know whether it was for horses or or other animals or you know the, the rights to certain things you know there's a little bit there was always a little bit of contest that was involved um, and so you know just thinking about how how far we've gone how far we've gone you know like you know, saying uh, in my other store in my other talk you know we we um, went through a period in, in American history or in history of the Amer in America as, as told by the Westerners you know of, of multi-generational trauma and you know of all the um, ups and downs you could say or the um, the government policy eras you could say eras you could say of relocation and you know um, also um, you know placement into the big cities you know like I was saying before that uh, our relatives are, are people that were moved uh, because of the relocation period into the big cities at where a lot of the Plains people Plains Indians that came into these areas all over this country and so you know that was the beginning of how powwow got to these different areas different cities um, San Francisco down here you know that Bay Area down here to LA and eventually down here to San Diego um, folks you know were native people were living in big cities and you know, in, in, in promise of jobs which almost never happened uh, but at the same time we had to find a way to to live and survive because it was a new way that we're as native people you know we've always survived um, what other whatever the situation was we we persevered we survived and just like this COVID we're gonna survive this and keep on going and have good times again and you know I just wanted to point that out um, and also you know thinking about how you know powwows came to this area I think uh, so very few uh, quite a few people you know got together other native people and kind of thought and you know kind of thought how you know how were they gonna bring the powwows to our area how were they gonna organize it you know um, how far were the protocols because there's certain protocols that um, that they had to go back home and, and petition their elders and, and say can we bring this powwow to here to this area and so some of their some of our elders you might know some of them and they had to petition their um, their groups and I think um, as native people as we've evolved we've um, I think powwow itself got influenced from all all different tribes all different areas and so you know like I said at the beginnings it was just more traditional the men 
telling the story or the warriors telling their story um, that was the beginning of it and then later on as it evolved you know um, other tribes wanted to be a part of it other um, women wanted to dance women wanted to come into the arena and you know and so it became more a little more complex and just kept you know kind of snowballing and becoming what it is today in contemporary times um, but um, thinking about that you know that story like I said you can um, put some uh, input if you have any um, input of uh, what I'm talking about you know the kind of the origin stories of of the powwow and how it evolved and also you know the beginnings of uh, a protocol like I said uh, and so back home you know thinking about back home again let's go back to the Crow, Crow people um, where there's different positions you know that were um, were told to us you know some of them were like the MC were like um, what we call them the town the, the criers the town criers they would tell the information uh, to the people and there's also the arena director there was also you know um, the grass dance part of it which was um, there's the grandstand societies there's different societies that put on um, these celebrations also I didn't mention that uh, different societies um, um, like you know like one is real simple as the grass dance society there's other dance societies that put on these events along with the uh, local people and you know there was uh, um, other things that involved there was uh, the owners of, of different items or objects you know the different items like the staff or the whip whip man uh, nowadays in contemporary, contemporary times we known known as the arena director uh, the whip, whip man was very important also you know he played his role um, and what he did you know and there's also like uh, the spoon carrier or spoon keeper spoon carrier spoon keeper um, and there was like owners of belts and there's owners of uh, headdresses there's owners of the staff the crooked staff uh, the different staff there was different staff than just that crooked staff there's quite a few different other staffs that I that I know of um, the coop stick and you know and adding to that another um, items ceremonial items that were or used or brought out at, at these times um, including like whistles um, not eagle whistles or eagle bone whistles but just whistles in general um, were also part of that um, part of you know the the, the uh, grass dance society and I'm not going to talk too much about these different societies you know because there's, there's rights and responsibilities for that I'm just gonna touch real basic on it um, um, and then I said if you you're uh, that person or know that part of it you can always add to the discussion here um, and just thinking about that not to make it too complex you know like those are some of the, the positions that were thought of and also you know like I said there was a um, a lot of other different tribes that like the Ojibwe tribe the Anishinaabe I think I think to try to go in order let's see um, I think the order that I kind of know is like the traditional men traditional and then it went to women's traditional um, and then the, you know um, and now there's a southern men traditional and there's a southern women's traditional from the from down when we say southern there's like a, a man imaginary line from the northern part I guess somehow this was developed I don't know how this became southern and northern um, and there's like southern drums and now there's northern drums and uh, back in the day it was just drums but now you know it's become more um, identity based you could say where they come from uh, like the, the drums from Oklahoma are also usually referred to as the southern drums um, all the way up in you know some into Nebraska um, but some people say like Nebraska can be southern sometimes they can be northern the Menominee and those tribes in the middle you know um, can be either southern or northern and it gets really complicated and, and you know go up to Montana and, and up into Canada you know be, become northern drums uh, anyway um, it can be really complicated thinking about the different drums and the societies and you know that that was a part of that circle too a dance circle was you know the drum <clears throat> and that has its own stories of uh, where we get got the drum and the big drum and and usually that's one of the the items that is needed to get one of these big events is that drum you know the drum uh, brings out the people to dance it tells the story uh, uh, songs were composed around that big drum and, and were, were played for the people and songs were composed for people I think I didn't touch on that you know some people were uh, back in the day you know like we're, we're part of this um, 
head staff, you could say, you know, and some of those people were, were people that um, were, um, you could say, chiefs in their in their in, in their in their villages or well-off people, you know, people that could give, because uh, this um, the way they developed the powwow was a giving, it was a giving ceremony where you give as much as you receive. You know, it was a state of uh, spirituality, it was a state of harmony, it was a uh, that dance circle to dance in that circle was uh, very uh, considered sacred or ceremonial at the same time you know if you don't know um, how um, the arena itself is set up you know it's set up usually the op there's only one opening and the opening is to the east and I think um, I'm thinking about a lot of our different cultures you know that's where we came from in the Navajo culture that's how we came into this world is from the east um, just thinking about how kind of that that kind of correlates a little bit between the two different cultures of of Absalga and the Dene or Navajo and the 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 the, the Crow people. So it's really interesting. It gets really complex, and you know, at the same time, you know, during these times, these uh, eras when we we're being moved around, you know, um, our people, you know, missed our culture, and so they had to position uh, wherever they're at to bring some of that culture to the big cities, to 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 the kids that were, you know. In, in going to college, um, going to the big college universities were in the big cities and so, so a lot of things are happening and a lot of things are going on um, in this time when you know power is being developed it's been uh, been so that way you know um, I think we had a lot of uh, vision visionaries you know um, we talk about some of our people you know we had um, things that we did uh, I just did something weird. Swipe. I was trying to clean the laptop and I just clipped myself away. Hopefully I'm still alive. Am I still alive, Thomas? Um, uh, I don't know. I just did something. Hopefully I'm still alive. I think so. I look, okay, the little red light's on. But anyway, <laughs> um, before I swipe myself out of existence, hey, um, get, out, get through my story. Um, so a lot of things were happening. And you know, a lot of things were happening on our reservations. You know, our reservations became because we were put on reservations. We were taken. The buffalo was killed. Um, a lot of our our ways of, of of taking care of ourselves. You know, through food, um, harvesting, um, harvesting animals, harvesting crops, harvesting you know different um, <clears throat> uh, things like the buffalo and you know. Um, Getting fish and gathering all that stuff was pretty much taken away from us, you know, taken away from us, and you know we were put on reservations and we had to survive. And some of us didn't do very good. Some of our tribes were, you know, didn't survive very good because you know they didn't have anything. They weren't able to prepare, you know, for a harsh winter or a harsh. Um, thank you, Thomas. Um, times, uh, and so you know I think uh, so we became reliant on some of what the government gave to us some of them you know was uh, um, some of the goods you know that's how kind of fry bread became involved because all, all of those um, you know those canned goods and all those those supposedly good stuff for us you know flour baking powder salt sugar um, all the things that commodities that you know I kind of grew up on but at the same time, we're, we're very bad for you. You know, this is what causes diabetes. This is what, you know, caused a lot of obesity in our, our native people and brought a lot of sickness um, when we changed our diet, when we changed our ways. And, and so now we're trying to, in modern days, we're trying to get back to that way of living, a way of being um, vegetarian, a way of growing our own crops, way of, you know, harvesting our own food. And, you know, and like I've said many times, you know, that way is free you know you don't have to go to the store to buy something you can actually grow your own food you can go out and uh, with a hunting license and get your own game if you need to you know some animals you don't need a hunting license but uh you know, like you know if you have your own chickens you get eggs um there's all kind of ways that you can eat for free and it's just us us you know getting that sorry i'm getting off topic but um yeah so fry bread you know was one of those things that came into play also <laughs> Um, I know some people just go to the pile just to get fry bread these days. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, it's kind of bad for you. I don't really, I've, uh, I, li I don't really like fry bread anymore as much as I used to, you know, as a kid, as, as I was growing older. Um, as I got older, you know, I really 
you know, kids always ask me to make fry bread. I know how to do it. And I make it sometimes, but I know it's bad for me. You know, I have diabetes, and I know a lot of people have that. And so I try to try to avoid it, try to stay away from it, try to not do it. Um, but if I never had a never have a piece of fry bread in my life, I'd be fine with it. Uh, but anyway, that's just me. Um, getting back to you know things, you know, I was talking about positions and and, and how it you know came kind of evolve. You know, as as crow people, we um, became complex even like in World War One, World War Two, um, we weren't even I think after that that's when we became known as citizens of of, of Native America and Native times. Um oh I don't miss Karen. She's right over there. <laughs> Someone just said she misses Karen. I know I miss Karen. Karen always has some um complexing stories she adds to maybe she'll come in next week and talk some more. I think uh, my talk is getting a little long because I'm kind of getting into a little bit more of the history of how it's developed. I think next week we might have to break it up and talk about um, just planning the powwow and the different positions and getting into that. But right now let's just continue you know, with kind of the origins of powwow and how it came to this, this area and how it, is, it has evolved and become what it, what it is known today, you know, so you know, at that time, you know, back in the day, when when things, when the Indian um, way of life was very getting complex, and you know, we were surviving, we were trying to, um, we were put on reservations. You know, things were taken away from us. Certain ceremonies, and we had to go so far as putting everything uh, underground and under, under. Um, we'd still do our of our events, but you know, like I said, we would do at night when no one was around, or we, because you know, at the time when we had powers, powwows, or uh, also, people um, when we had gatherings, large gatherings of native people, they they thought we were terrorists getting together to, um, um, you know, conspire, 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 size, <laughs> um, do um, terrorist things, <laughs> and here we're just out celebrating. And so, you know, the U.S. government came in and and and, and would you know arrest us, police us, and shut down our many gatherings that we would uh, try to have. And so, you know, things were. Um, not very good uh, for us as Indian people. You know, we were put on reservations. Our way of life, our ceremonies were shut down. We're policed. Um, we go to jail. So a lot of un underground, like I said. And during this time, also was when we were um, kind of pushed out, and a lot of our tribes moved out to different areas. And and so, like I said, we are, are we missed our old ways, and we wanted to bring some of that power protocol back with us. But you know how. How was that going to be uh, possible? How was it going to be done? You know, and so like I was saying, our our, our elders, our our older people. For me, as uh, crow people, we always had visions. You know, uh, some uh, the way we were taught, we have like what's called daydreams or daydreamers. Um, I think about how things are going to be, and you know, from where I come from, that's where I come. I envision, I envision, you know, n new new age thinking. Oh, we envision stuff to make it, you know, possible. And, but as Indian people, we've always known that. We've always known that. Um, we've always done that, and we've always, you know, um, take great pride in our, our visions, you know, our dreams that we have of the future. You know, um, if it wasn't for a dream that an elder had, we wouldn't be able to, to go to this place where I know as home prior to Montana. We had an elder that dream dreamt of that place, the sacred place where we would grow our tobacco, and you know, be plentiful with game and. and and so there was a vision that was sought or that was was um, foretold and, and, and we um, fulfilled that vision. Um, and so, you know, same thing went with the powwow. You know, there's a vision of what the powwow was um, going to be, what it was going to become, you know, what was going to happen. And so the people, you know, the organizers, the very first organizers, the people, you know, the, were some elders, some community members uh, up in, you know, up in that area. You know, for us as Crow people, we refer to them as the, Hadatsa people, you know, they became the Hadatsa people. Hadatsa people are, for us as Crow people, there are, some people say they're our older sister, or some people refer to them as our parent tribe, where we came from. But before they were Hadatsa, we were, we were called something else. Um, that's more, uh, we get into a little bit of history, a little bit more complex, you know. Um, for us, you know, that's where it kind of, we had to turn to them as Crow people. We had the rights to do this uh, ceremony, but we had to go to the rights because, uh, like I said, a lot of different tribes wanted to get involved. You know, there's uh, females and kids that wanted to be involved, and different um, 
different tribes all over the country that wanted to be a part of uh, the powwow and you know and more contemporary times I was saying that it started with like traditional dancing or the southern or northern and then it went into um, uh, I think fancy dancing um, actually I think it was uh, jingle dress came f before that you know the Anish Anishinaabe people um, brought that jingle dress and there's a whole story about with that you know how it came involved and then you know there was also the stories of the more in contemporary um, dances the fancy shawl fancy shawl for women and, and fancy bustle or the war dance you know as referred to as in the southern plains area the war dance you know um, I know there's uh, I always uh, I always hear that talk about because um, there was times you know it was hard times and different things we went through different um, eras as, as different people that there was different things that were happening and some people um, started going to what's called the, the Wild West show or with uh, with um, uh, Buffalo Bill there was a show that would, would travel all over the country and all even travel overseas and it would showcase dancers and some of those dancers were you know the fancy we actually started off with the traditional dancers and you know if you ever see a traditional dancer it's kind of real slow real monotical and you know and you know you you know when people want to put on a show or something like that you know real make it more exciting uh they want something more exciting more more adventurous and so this buffalo bill wanted some something more exciting and he was paying indians you know wasn't paying them that much but it was a way that native people could get money to pay for you know the hardships at home to send money to the folks and so you know they kind of some people say they sold themselves or you know they sold their culture uh, but it was a survival and so you know that part was the influence of the powwow also and i think this is where uh, people also talk about how the grand entry um how buffalo bill developed the grand entry of all the indians that would come you know they would come in the parade as the white people watched <laughs> and they would do their performance and so it started off with real traditional and so that wasn't fancy enough for Wild Bill and so they wanted something more fancy and so you know the fancy dancers the war dancers came in you know they referred to them as a war dancers you know because that was like I said you know uh, mistranslation of the people that wanted the people to be more excited when you say say oh there's dancers coming that doesn't very excited but if you tell people there's war dancers they go oh there's a war dancer let's go see and so you know that excitement drove drew people and so that the war dance and you know the dancers of uh, the fancy dance came out and so the footsteps got real complex and real intricate and so that became influence of the powwow you know and so you, like i said you got all these things coming and influencing this way of life this dance this old plains indian kind of dance the dog dog eating ceremony dance and you know it's gotten complex and so all these influences from different areas different tribes um, different ways and so there was kind of uh, protocol that needed to be developed and like I said our visionaries our people our, our traditional people had uh, visionaries of what this would the complexity of it and so as Crow people we went to the our Hadatsa people and got some advice on how to do it and so and, and they were they had connection with a lot of the I want to say Sioux people but the Lakota and the Nakota Dakota um, and all the, the the tribes in that area the plains tribes and so you know they they put together things and you know made things happen and and so you know getting back to the cities areas and the cities that the people that wanted the powers wanted that them to come to their area and so because they missed their culture they missed their way of life and it was a time when you know like i said um things went underground um they would have it um, up in l.a Oh, it's here. A lot of the people that are still there, they tell the story of how they used to go right after work. They go to the mountains, to the hills, and you know they bring that big drum. They just start singing, and and you know it was a socialization. And there was dancing, and there was a, a socialization that would happen in the hills and in the middle of the night, <laughs> right after work. You know there was a spot, to, a place to be. You know the Hollywood Hills. I think I hear stories about that, and you know how that kind of developed, and so. You know, but at that time, you know, alcohol was uh, was very prevalent. You know, drug use was very prevalent. Also, you know, um, it was a way for us to cope with our multi generation trauma. And some of us, you know, still still suffer for that, from that. And you know, to bring it back to talk about contemporary times, you know, we we've uh, made our gatherings, our our places, you know, more a lot more sacred. We don't allow drugs or alcohol. And even uh, um, like I said, they're um, 
it's not allowed anymore um, at all, all of our gatherings nowadays. And so, you know, that development, that, that mixing of culture happened all over the country and we wanted it because all of our people were different people, different tribes, different communities came into the big cities and they wanted that and they put it, put it together and organized and like I said, they petitioned, you know, the, the, the elders back home and they wanted to bring in so they, they thought of different ways and they, they came up with ideas and, and things that they could put into play, you know, when and now when you come to um to California, you know, we have all these different positions, you know, that we've got the you know, the M C we've got the arena director, we've got the the head staff or um the head staff, you know, you got your head man, head woman, um head boy, head girl, head junior boy, head junior girl, head golden age, how head senior golden age and it just get you know, some of these some of these places really get complex and you know the senior senior at golden age and you know um but some of the things that they they still have also like traditional a lot of, i've seen in a lot of the traditional ones are some of the other ones that are, are are put together good they 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 don't forget that veteran the head veteran dancer or head veteran person you know nowadays it's uh, usually head like a head core dancer as kind of a veteran also but at the same time it's not and there's a head person you know arena director and, and, and sometimes there's also like a head if it's done by society there's a head um, like the grass dance society would have their own head person the whip man was part of that um, and so you know some of those were put into how powwows are organized today um, if you see you know some of the protocols some of the ways that it's done you know we have some of these original ways of thought and like if you go back in uh, comparison, if we go back to like uh, the Crow Fair, uh, we don't have head man or head woman positions back there because um, everybody, it's like a way of life for us. It's the way we we know already know how to dance. We already kind of know the protocols. But here in, in the cities, you know, the uh, people were coming to these dances and needed to some sort of protocol to fall back on to to make sure everything, you know, as far as protocols were followed to the team. Some of the people that were picked for head head staff or head men and head women knew these uh, positions and knew the importance of it. And I think um, I'm thinking about different positions, like I was saying back in the day, you know, people that were picked for some of these positions were people that were well off, you know, well off in their community, well off in, in, in that they could give back. Cause this, this dance circle was a giving circle, you know, it was giving a lot of what you, you, you do, you know, in return, you get good things back. And, and so, you know, it was a whole process that was um, developed and put together. And it's very heal healing and spiritual. If I, you really start to talk about, like I said, when we, even when we set up the arena, um, usually in the beginning, you know, um, I know when I'm asked, I've been um, head staff, I've been asked to be head man, I've been asked to be the arena director, and I put together many different powwows, you know, since I've come to California and, you know, become and earn, earn those rights to do that and earn those rights to, to put things together like that. But, and at the same time, you know, give thanks to all the people that helped me with that and, 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 and I didn't do that. And, you know, as a veteran too, you know, I was given some rights and responsibilities to tell these stories, um, to hold on and, and to tell the stories when, when time was right. Because that was, like I said, in the beginnings, our our veterans were some of the first people that were were part of that that protocol that only veterans can bring um, other dancers into that arena and and allow them, you know, give them the rights to dance, and with some teachings, you know, we um, if you ever get to some of our teachings when a young dancer is brought into the arena, you know, we take them to the to the east, to the west, to the north. Um, and you know to the south and kind of I kind of went oddball in that direction thing but you know we're taking to the each directions and you know we talk you know give um and usually we bring someone with us usually like a female or a two-spirit we bring them with us and they you know they tell them you know give them ways of life give them advice you know as we bring the young dancers but you know for us as crow people we you know veterans we still kind of go back to that old way and the veterans you know bring that 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 per that young person or that person that wants to dance into the middle of the arena, the center, you know, they would say that was one of the most sacred parts, and we we, we do those kind of same um, 
ways of, of you know giving the rights responsibilities of, of dance society of dancing and, and, and portraying that because you know when you're um, a dancer you uh, people look at you people watch you you automatically become a role model and and as Indian people we knew that as the old elders knew that we so we you know took care of that you know we created ceremony to bring young people into the dance circle into the dancer and what we know it as as today you know um, and so there's still that um, in a lot of the palace and some of the palace not all of them but they still have that respect for the for the veterans because you know that's the origin stories of how these um, powers came to be you know was the telling story of the veterans the warriors the people that you know gave that ultimate you know sacrifice or sacrifice of the time you know I just you know wanted to really um, emphasize that part you know uh, there was a lot of like I said a lot of things happening in America in our societies in, in in our ways of life you know like I said everything went underground in in, in 1978 you know two years after I was born you know the freedom of religious act you know came invoked and so that sparked something again you know all these influences and so we brought out the different celebrations we brought out the big drum because <clears throat> we weren't going to be you know put in jail for you know, gathering and having ceremony there was a lot of petition and ceremony that and you know um, things that had to happen you know even like the forming of AIM and different you know protests that you know my family were involved we had to go to Congress and protest to get that um, religious uh, freedom act invoked for us for native people but not only for us but for all people that had their religion or their ceremonies taken away and so you know I, I'm very happy and humble that you know my grandparents were part of that both the Navajo side and my grand, grand grandparents on the Crow side both went to petition the U.S. government to get those rights and responsibilities and you know I always you know tell the story of them you know I'll continue to tell their story because you know it, we played a role we all played a role and like I said this is a discussion you know I really appreciate people that put input and, and put into the discussion, you know, the things that, you know, how this uh, origins of powwows came to this area. And hopefully today, you know, I just wanted to cover kind of the origins of the power and kind of get into some of the the um, positions. And maybe uh, I think for my next talk, we'll, we'll, we'll get kind of do um, a deeper dive into, you know, how how to organize, you know, a uh, big event like this, you know, what are some of the positions, what do they mean, you know, uh, what are the responsibilities. Um, next week, you know, I'll have my wife, you know, I'll have Karen, I, th I got a request for Karen, so we'll have uh, Karen talk, because Karen, um, if you know my wife, you know, she's from Guatemala, but, you know, at the time, a long time ago when we met, you know, we met at a powwow, we met at a gathering, uh, we met at SDSU, if you know our love story, Think about Valentine's, you know, that was one of our, the second date that we went on was to the SDSU powwow here in San Diego. And then later on in life, you know, we organized a few powwow. I don't know if you saw, some of you might have seen some of my pictures. Now my wife was um, organized a, a, a big powwow back in the day. Um, and she's um, at the Cal State San Marcos, you know, um, she organized that. She also helped, you know, long ago when Palomar College had a, had their own powwow. Um, I know her sister was also involved in the powwow group or powwow. Nisa and Asa there at the um, Palomar College, it's a local community college. We don't know. And then to the bigger uh, four-year community, uh, four-year college of Cal State San Marcos, she organized and helped um, put on that powwow. A few years, you know, running. She had that celebration. You know, where we had. Um, and I know of, some of you might have seen pictures. You know, my daughter was just little, and she was carrying my daughter as a photo with me carrying the flags because you know I helped also help organize our veterans and brought the flag in um, but at the same time she was one of the young students young kids that was there organizing and putting together that that big celebration that I think next week will be kind of a treat we're going to talk about uh, the positions and protocols and you know and things like that so you know tune in next week um, I know next week um, hope you guys had a good Valentine's you know I <laughs> should have thought about it more you know could have brought my valentine yeah. to talk with me today and yeah. but uh yeah i think um next week um i'll have her come out and, and talk and <clears throat> share her her insight of uh different positions and hopefully i can convince her i just thought i had 
I probably just did online. I should have asked her first. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I can convince her to come on. But there's been requests. Um, and so, yeah, we'll share a little bit more, get into more detail about the different positions. Um, like I said, there's different positions that were developed here in California. Um, like I said, back home, you know, we don't have a head man or head um, woman dancer. Um, but we do have like an MC. We do have arena directors. Um, we do have a head veteran and, and, and a few other, other things that we have there that's different and unique. I know in different areas, different cities, different powwows or different gatherings, or celebrations, there's different um, protocols that are involved. But here in California, when we kind of develop our own uh, unique and different um, kind of uh, head staff uh, protocol kind of position. And we'll talk more about that next week. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, you know, just kind of give you kind of a, a, an origin story of where, you know, where it kind of came from developed. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of complex things, you know, from the Buffalo Bill Wild West show coming involved and also, you know, the movement of people all over this country and, and, you know, missing our culture and bringing it live and, you know, the celebration when we actually were able to celebrate after 19... Uh, 78 when the Religious Freedom Act was acted and, and, and how it and how, how it just kept building and building and it's got come complex today you know and then how um, also I guess you know how the local community like Kumiai people the Lusenia people how they became involved um, um, it wasn't just their you know their their powwow money. Um, I know the contest money, a lot of people think about uh, a few of the contest money because the, the casinos put the money up. Actually, the tribes put the money up for the contest. And, you know, um, that has its, its role also and its part, but at the same time, you know, there's more, um, some of the community that brought. I know that nowadays, you know, I really enjoy, you know, seeing the bird singers at the beginning of the powwow or the beginning of the celebration, um, being the first ones, you know, to talk or to first one to celebrate and first one to tell their story I really enjoy that and I really enjoy you know even like the gore dance if you don't know what the gore dance is you know it's become a part of powwows here in California like or back north you know we don't have gore dance or down south they do um, but at the same time um, gore dance has its own story and its own origins and how it became part of the powwow just like the you know the bird dancers and bird singers um, wildcat singers and also you know the 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 goat are my own goat singers um and some other singers wildcat um but anyway i'm um, just thinking about all that how that's been the influence and how other cultures wanted to be a part of it and it's been you know put together um and, and, and we have we had we have or had big celebrations and that's what we're going to probably continue doing as soon as we're done out of this COVID, you know, I can't wait to be go to one of these celebrations and be able to dance and hear the big drum and the singers and the camaraderie and, you know, get to see some elders, some friends and, you know, teach some stuff and be a part of the community again. And, and, and I think all that, you know, we need that healing to go on. But for now, you know, we're going to have to uh, just do this virtual, you know, vir check out some of the virtual healing dances. I mean, know right after this, we're going to have a virtual, um, our virtual uh, dance class soaring eagles so if you want to uh tune into that or join you know you're more than welcome from from my point of view you know i'll be the mc or dj uh melissa so at uh i think was it six six o'clock on tuesdays we're having soaring eagles um and and thank you carolina for mesh, always messing or, or you know putting out my my little talk today um i really appreciate that um like i said you know our culture our way of life is prevention um, oh, thank you, Thomas. Thomas brought the schedule. Uh, just some real good, quick things to, to look forward to, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, it was President's Day yesterday. Uh, I really didn't celebrate that. And like I said, Valentine's. Every day is Valentine's for me. Uh, every day I celebrate and give love to my kids. And I love you. And I love you. And I love you. And I love, you know, this life. You know, I give appreciation for it. And, you know, today we had cooking matters. We had, you know, my Facebook live talk and Sword Eagles. Uh, tomorrow we're having Friday night live Zoom. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, homework lounge Zoom homework for the kids, three thirty to five. Um, pick up your crafts if you haven't picked up your craft for, crafts from the, the 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 youth center. You know, let's get crafty on Fridays. 
four to five, I think last week. What did we what did you do last week, Thomas, for the craft? Um, we did the I think it was the Groundhog Day one. Oh, the Groundhog. They had this cool Groundhog thing. And no, they did something for Valentine's too. They put Oh, the necklace. Yeah, they did a necklace. Um, it's good for the kids, you know, pick up those craft supplies and do that. It's a lot of fun. If you didn't go to the um, the V R V G R youth, it's a youth talking talking circle. Um, they've been, you know, having. They need more kids, you know, get more kids to come and talk, and uh, so it's a fun time, you know. I know Thomas was having a good time. They have little um, raffles, and they have um, um, last last week they had a scavenger hunt, and Thomas was running around. He wore this hat that was actually his bowl, but anyway, they the kids have fun. Check that out um, if you haven't tuned in or checked that out yet. And, and like I said, there's a lot of other happening happenings here at the the San Diego Indian Health Center. Uh, check them out. You know they're going live a lot of times. There are some, some good talks. Like I said, you can tune on in, tune into some old talks. You know Randy Edmonds and a few other people that have talked. And of course, you know you got Margie talking, having her talking circle, and Will Brighty. Um, all right, guys, you guys have a good day. You know, this is Richard D. Crane, you know, signing off. Smudge, don't judge. And again, Baby Yoda says goodbye. Have a good day.